So welcome to a little comic book reading session. Um, for this video, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to read a comic book from the 1940s. Um, this book is called uh, Jingle Jangle Comics. Uh, and it's issue number 18. Okay. And uh, this thing is from the 1940s and it was printed by Easter Color Printing Company. Now, Eastern Color Printing Company was in the business of um, they printed comics and they were also a printing house and they printed uh, the majority of the comic books in the United States um, during that period during the golden age and the early silver age and um, for the 1950s I know this number I, I, I looked it up um, just to give you an estimate of how many comic books were being printed during that period in 1950s it's estimated that about 65 million comic books were being printed a month and that's huge compared to what's being printed right now um, some of the comic books some of the well-known comic books they were getting print runs of over a million or so and the comic books right now they're they're considered to be doing extremely well they get a print run of about a hundred thousand or so so the print run of comic books has gone down a lot and there's a there is a lot of golden age comic books out there and there are some some serious key issues out there um but the main thing with comic books during that period is um is to find them in high quality because uh, there's way more lower quality comics out there than um lower grade comics out there than there are high grade comics and this one is um is one of the comic books i just recently acquired uh, and I just bought a batch of these things because I've never read uh, Jingle Jangle comics before and I didn't really know anything about them and you can tell that this is actually from um, during World War II because it's got uh, uh, the National War Fund uh, war bonds uh, as advertised right in the front and that's one thing comic books were used for a lot during that period and at present is uh, for propaganda corporate or government propaganda and there's a lot of underground comic books that are on the other f on the flip side of the whole thing okay so uh, let's have a little read through this i haven't read through this um i don't know what it is about i don't know i don't know these characters and uh, um i don't know we'll take a look and uh, and see what we find out right so let's crack this thing open and i usually when i get comic books i uh, uh, I buy them. What I do is uh, I bag and board them. Uh, so I put brand new bags and boards on whatever comics I do end up buying. And just for anyone that's uh, doing the bag and boarding, whenever you get, you put tape on these things, get tape that comes off fairly easy. And when you're taking it off, put it on the side because you don't want the tape to snag the cover. Okay. And what we got here is. Um, it's number 18 jingle jangle and the quality of this is it's just a good quality it's uh it's a low grade comic um you know it's got stains on it it's got some tears on it but the cover is good enough it doesn't have any serious rips or tears on it and you can take a look and it looks pretty cool right and whenever i pick these up uh, i open these up i usually if they're you know older comics i look at the fine print to see exactly what printing it is uh, when it was published and this thing was uh, printed by jingle jangle comics and it's number 18 and it was december 1945 published bi-monthly uh which means um once every two months once every two months and is copyrighted famous funnies incorporated they were based in new york and the yearly subscription to this is 60 cents which is basically six issues you get uh, for 10 cents a pop and the mailing for this was um, if you can see this is 15 cents for mailing at uh, six six times a year which is that includes packaging and the mailing costs um, which is crazy the total would have come out to for one year subscription was 75 cents uh, consider that to comic books now in 2014 um the average comic book sells anywhere between three to five dollars uh, and that's just if you go to the comic book store and buy it straight from there um as far as uh, collectability goes uh for me this is collectible i like the stuff 
Um, I collected it. Uh, I didn't pay very much for it, a uh, few bucks. In mint condition, these things are worth, um, like if this thing, if you could find it in mint condition, I'm pretty sure there are some that exist. Um, this thing's worth well over a hundred dollars, a couple of hundred bucks, and it's, you know, in amazing shape. You know, you could fetch a few hundred bucks for it, um, which is pretty cool. And just flipping through this, it looks like this is basically a compilation of just different stories and different characters, uh, which is what a lot of comic books during that period were, and what a, some comic books are right now. Um, especially from the independent comic book publishers when they're trying to introduce someone when they're putting a few different artists together um, to print a few issues so what we'll do is uh, let's, let's just flip through this and see what we got uh, and what i uh, usually end up doing is uh, when i grab a comic like this i take the backing board because they are these books are fragile uh, you know i don't want to I don't want to put too much wear and tear on it more than what it is, right? Um, so what I do, I usually put the backing boards behind them. That way, the comic is not flipping. It's not going to put more stress on the spine and tear off the staples. Because you can see the top staples are at loose. The bottom staple is barely attached. Okay. Um, so this thing, uh, anti spry. <laughs> don't know this character don't know the kids are and this is what is it one two three four five six a seven page story um which is pretty cool uh, and then peter mouse presents peter mouse was busy tying a piece of blue string around the ring of molding cheese i guess it's a little story about peter mouse What's the other one? And a one page little story. Waldo. Waldo service service deluxe. Waldo, the head waiter, says he wants to see you. I guess this is Waldo. No, Waldo is a head waiter. No, Waldo. This is Waldo. Yeah. So this is Waldo. Waldo, the head waiter wants to see you. Waldo. Mr. Diamond Rocks. Diamond Rocks is coming to lunch. Give him the best service possible. The best, the very best. Ah, Mr. Diamond Block, Diamond Rocks, welcome, welcome. I'll have an order of bananas and cream menu. <laughs> the, guy, the guy goes and gets the cow and a cart full of bananas. So I guess the cream is fresh and the bananas are definitely fresh and, fresh and plentiful. And what you see in comic books in general is uh, you get a lot of names uh, that are uh, sort of descriptive to the character, right? Diamond rocks. Uh, the guy's rich and he's, you know, diamonds and rocks, right? Cute. So it's just a one pager. Now my pronunciation of names is not very good. Uh, what is this one? Johnny and Jay. Chunsi Chirp. Chunsi Chirp. One, two, three. Let's just flip through this quickly. And then uh, and a lot of puzzles and stuff. Instead of advertisements, they're, they're puzzles, uh, amusing little puzzles and one-page stories and little intermissions, um, as opposed to what a lot of comics are right now. And, uh, there's a lot of advertisements in recent comics. And this is a puzzle, a puzzling message. During a recent paper, pa paper scrap drive in a Pixie Town, someone found this puzzling message. Can you read it? Oh, all the words are stretched. Take a look. All the words here are stretched. Right? And this way too, I guess. And there was a lot of paper drives uh, during the war period. A lot of scrap metal and paper. So a lot of comic books. 
used to get recycled and destroyed, which is really sad. And then here's another little fun uh, rainbow colored music with magic charts. So here's another little fun little puzzle. Not puzzle, but I guess a little game. Mary had a little lamb. Let's check this out. So what does this say? Here's a mag magic chart for you to trace. Then copy the color and put it in place on your piano where it becomes a guide. No notes, rests, and sharps cannot hide. So, so notes, rests, and sharps cannot hide. And you may learn a tune to play in this delightful, easy, simple way. Uh, super cute. There's actually a patent number on here. Check this out. Patent number this. Left hand, magic, you cut this out. And you put it on the piano. And you play. The colors are coordinated with the colors here. You play Mary Had a Little Lamb. Cool. Here are the notes with colored faces waiting to be played in turn. So put your fingers in their places and see how easy, how easy it is to learn. And it's got the lyrics for Mary Had a Little Lamb at the bottom of it. All rights reserved. All these copyright stuff. What's this one? Jingle Jangle Tales. The Honey Hearted Hunter and the Half Varnished Duck. <laughs> this is varnishing the duck. Oh, that's interesting. Who wrote this? I don't know who wrote this right now. Oh, there it is. By George Carlson. I'm not sure who George Carlson is. Some of the comic book historians uh, might know. And again, it's torn a little bit. So as grading goes, um, I would give this one at least a three. Um, yeah, the grades go for comic books from, I guess, zero, poor, extremely poor, to um, ten. Ten is being absolutely meant. You don't find tens. Uh, from this period, you find a lot of fare, which is less than two. And this one, this one's not bad shape, actually, if you look at it, right? Pretty, pretty. And this one is a longer tail. Bang. Jewel House Thieves. Stephanie Firstad. Firstad. So another story. Bingo and Clum. Santa Claus story. Wow, they go to the moon or something. That's interesting. And then you get to the end and you got one page for advertisement here and the advertisements from that period are interesting scientific and this thing's torn here right so this one's probably grade three or two for comic book because anyway grade two good copy and this advertisement when i was a kid i used to see this one so it's incredible from 1945 they used to run the same ad i think the cartoon was a little different but it was the same routine uh very skinny, weak guy being bullied around by muscular guy. And it's a little advertisement of, you know, start exercising. Can you, I can make you a new man too, in only 15 minutes a day. So nothing changes, still lots of these advertisements around. Not in this style, but uh, you don't see these kinds of ads in comic books very much anymore. Or I haven't seen one for a long time. In the 1970s and 80s, uh, you used to see these. I guess they're remnants of the 1940s. Wow. Eh? So, should we pick one of these stories and read? Why not read the cover story, yeah? Jingle Jangle. What was her name? Her name was Ancy Spry. So, let's have a read through this, yeah. Ancy Spry. 
Let's take a look. With saw and hammer, nails and wood, anti spry is mighty good. And as the derby day approaches, she hammers out the coach of coaches. Tough kids took out our carts from us and left this clumsy blunderbuss they did cried anti spry i say let's use our hands and save the day by ben levine and i've heard ben levine's name before uh, thanks for the wagon auntie are you going to uh, watch the race let me take a look at this one let me take a look at this wagon brand new after building a green green after building and greasing that cart, I should say, but hurry, you'll be late. It's almost time for the race, Binny. So the boy's name's Binny. Oh, those are the bad guys, I think. Bet we're gonna win too. Hope anti spry is on time. And then usually they have a little message continue on the next page or the page after if there's advertisements. There's a whole bunch of advertisements for a whole bunch of goodies. Cool. So let's check this out. Oh, here are the bad boys waiting around the corner. But trouble shows his ugly face. Two bullies mean to win the race. Look at the wagon. Anti built for those kids. We could use that cart. Butch. Yeah, toughy we will come on butch and tuffy so tuffy walks up to them and goes come on tuffy don't talk so much look at the red wagon kids uh, no we want ours mm. nick's auntie i like that come back here you two that's auntie spry they got our wagon, Auntie. Okay, kids, get ready. Oh, the wagon got stolen and the tough guys have taken it. Who's who's driving it? Oh, it's uh, Tuffy. A trade. A trade is a trade. They got our, our and we got theirs. Well, hmm, well maybe so, Auntie. Auntie gets... Uh, And he decides to join the battle. Teach the bullies a lesson, eh? Maybe I've got a few tricks up my sleeve. Now if I can get back to the hill in time. She took a detour sign. Next page. Take a look. She's placing the detour sign. Those tough kids will win in my wagon unless they turn they'll turn off at this detour sign. They're off. They're off, kids. Bang. May the best wagon win the war bond. Oh, this is for the war bond. That's for the war bond, right? So there's a lot of propaganda in this stuff, right? War bond propaganda. We're sunk unless Anti Spry thinks of something. Number 13. What number is the red wagon? Number two is the red wagon. Boy, look at us travel. Look at Butch just relaxed. See how far ahead we are, Tuffy? Never mind. Look out for that sign. Ooh, she placed the sign right in the middle. Wow. Don't bother. You couldn't read it now. Auntie's a tough chick. Look at her. She jumps on the wagon, moving wagon. Neither can I. But I'm not letting go. Hey, I can't steer this thing. No kidding, you're in the air. Look at that. That's going to be a hard crash. Not in the comic book world, though. Ouch, my knee. That's. Can you direct us to the races officer? Tweet. Oh my god, they're about to go through the store. This younger gender and their jeeps is going through a department store. She's riding them. Sorry, madam, but this cart is out of control. 
sale. 98 cents. I wonder what they're selling gloves. They're selling gloves for 98 cents. I can't see, but something tells me we're off the track. Well, if you can't hold on, madam. Oh, they picked up the little mannequin. That's what it was. That's what she's calling a madam. Oop. Throws her off. Look at this one. The store certainly has more departments. And we must have it have hit them all. So you're just going through the department store, hardware department. Oh, anger around their neck. A rope and anchor. This ought to match something. Phew. A breath of fresh air. Hey, let me breathe. You got me. You got me stuff. I guess Tuffy's having a hard time with Auntie, eh? Such a collection of useless things. All the stuff they've picked up. I'm gonna try and get control of the steering wheel. Got it. I'll head back to the race. So they try and get back to the race. Ooh, look at the race. What'll I do with Grandma Butch? Shove her off. Shove her off, question mark. Asking Butch what to do. I guess Butch is calling the shots, eh? Now we need her weight for speed. We'll win this race yet. Hmm. Did I go through all this for nothing? Uh oh. And he's thinking about it. Oh, she's got the anchor. Take a look, take a look at what she's going to do. Maybe I should tap them lightly on the head, but it won't look nice. Oh, okay, so she's not going to hit them. Here we are, Tuffy. Watch us pass. Look at this. They're about to pass. Oh, gee, Vinny. There they go with Auntie Spry, too. So long, slow pokes. Oh, they went all the way to the front. I do declare. Well, the race is as good as one now. And she still has the anchor. She's going to throw it on the moving truck. If this doesn't work, I'm at the end of my rope. <laughs> funny you can see the sound effect screech it's coming to a halt Bitsy and Benny the war were the winners number 13 Auntie Spry always knows what to do we were robbed look at these guys do look tough eh, in this mode and there is the war bond $25 back then ah. cute and who was this person? Ben Levine wrote this. Okay. We already read the one pager. Huh? That was cute, eh? The bird. Day 10. Tendlar, Dave Tendlar. Let's see what the caption says here, yeah. An important visitor is coming to town, and all the birds are at Twitter with plans for his welcome. That is, all the birds except Humphrey Bork. He has plans of his own for the visit of the old eagle eye. I guess that's Humphrey. Thank you, my boy. Thank you. Now, as I was saying to this bright, bright group of students. Mm -hmm. So this guy is Humphrey Bohawk. All the birds except Humphrey Bohawk. I'll have to fix that. Chauncey. Chauncey. So he's done something, something to the flowers that they're about to give him, right? Ooh. Oh, <laughs> he 
put some uh, uh, what do you call it hornet's nest in there ouch then he put a rope across and that's trickery so it's basically what's going on so this uh I guess, I guess aristocrat or someone high up in the social structure is coming for a visit to the school and this guy doesn't like it. Black, wears a red cap. A lot of imagery here, right? Student comes along, the teacher says, I guess he's going to give him flowers. Good little bird, ah, huh? well, I'll do something about that. And these are the flowers, maybe that's the mum. Yes, ma'am. No, I guess it's the, it's, it's the teacher. So he takes it and puts a hornet's nest in it. When he's walking by, pulls the rope, trips him. The flowers with the hornets. Hornet's nest inside fly up and smack the aristocrat in the head. Look at all the bumps he's got on him. Cry baby serves you right for being such a goody goody. So oh. So his friend comes and comforts him. Oh, he's taking a present. So he gives him a better idea. And the little guy decides to take a present to the eagle eye. Eagle eye. Oh, opens it up and it's a brush I guess he doesn't like the brush make fun of me will you get out before I trash you with an inch uh oh he didn't like the brush they go knock on the door again open it up they pour water on top of his head this guy the black guy with the hats Oh, grabs them both. So they're telling on him, telling him about who's been pulling the tricks, yeah? As far as I can see, the only good little bird around here is Humphrey, Brie Bohawk. I have something for him. Where is he? He says it out loud. And this guy's stupid enough to come by. Here I am, sir. Did you call me? Mm -mm. Look at the little tripper. His head's poking out, laughing. Oh, they lynch him. Oh my god. Well, that's pretty harsh. Ouch. And they smack him. And they pour water on him. Want to confess, Mr. Humphrey? Or should I tell the boys to repeat the treatment? No, stop. Please stop. I did it, I confess. Ah, reminiscent, eh? Reminiscent of what's going on right now in politics. A little torture does the trick. Hmm. That's not a happy story. 